This is a special report from About Space Today. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is About Space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome and thanks for listening to our special report. Well, with the commitment to return to the moon by 2024 and stay, with the objective of future missions to Mars, well, all of this has been rapidly accelerating NASA's plans, including regular manned missions to the ISS. Our Washington Bureau Chief will be joining us, and you'll hear from NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine and Mr. SpaceX himself, Elon Musk, next on About Space Today. Are you ready to fly away on a dream vacation? For cruises and all-inclusive resort vacations, call D&D Cruise and Tours at 877-747-8631. That's 877-747-8631. And see us on Facebook, D&D Cruise and Tours, where your dreams become a reality. Welcome back. And be sure to stay tuned for my special announcement at the end of our podcast. Well, coming up, NASA Administrator Jim Bradenstein and Elon Musk. But first, we go to our Washington Bureau. With the latest news is our Bureau Chief, Rick Potluck. Northrop Grumman Cygnus space freighter blasted off February 15th from NASA's Wallops Flight Center in Virginia. The space delivery of nearly 7,500 pounds of cargo arrived February 18th at the International Space Station, where astronaut Drew Morgan used the Canada arm to grab the payload, which included science, cargo, and space station supplies. February 17th, SpaceX launched another Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral, loaded with 60 more Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit, bringing the total to 300 satellites, capable of providing improved internet capability to Earth. It was the 80th successful flight for SpaceX. However, the company missed a milestone rocket landing on what was SpaceX's fourth flight of the year. The Falcon 9's first stage failed to land on the drone ship landing platform in the Atlantic Ocean on what would have been the 50th booster recovery. The first stage did make a soft landing next to the drone ship, and SpaceX is optimistic that it landed intact. Reporting from the Washington News Bureau, I'm Rick Potlock. Thanks for the news update, Rick. At the recent news conference, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein and Elon Musk talked about the most recent success of SpaceX Dragon. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Another amazing milestone is complete. Uh, We're very grateful. Congratulations to SpaceX and the entire NASA team on this final major flight milestone that we needed to accomplish. Make no mistake, there's a lot left to do. And when we think about um, what we have done so far with the Crew Dragon, we've had a pad abort test that was successful. We've had now a a high altitude abort test that has been successful. Um, On Demo-1, we launched, uh, we controlled the spacecraft, we docked to the International Space Station, we undocked, and then we had entry, descent, and landing. So this is is a program that is moving forward very fast. Uh, Congratulations to everybody involved, and um, I'll turn it over to uh, Elon. All right, well, without uh, a lot of dedicated people at SpaceX NASA, this would not have happened. Um, So it's just uh, thank you for your hard work and... Uh, dedication to achieving this uh, the success of this mission. You know, I think a few uh, uh, points that that are that are kind of exciting to note uh, that the the peak uh, velocity of the of, of Dragon during abort was uh, uh, more than more than double the speed of sound. It went to Mach 2.2 um, and achieved an altitude of 40 kilometers or 130,000 feet, 131,000 feet. Uh, I think these are pretty exciting uh, uh, specs, you know, to be um, for the for the sport to have uh, 
gone more than three times the altitude of a, of a typical airliner. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm super fired up. This is great. You know, uh, it's really great. Um, Marcia Dunn, Associated Press. Um, Elon carry crew as soon as March. Is that feasible? And when do you think the crew launch might be? Uh, well, you know, we were just talking about this in the green room, and uh, uh, I, my guess is the first question that will be asked is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so we we we, we agreed on on uh, response. Um, so it's collectively. This is not. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, the the hardware necessary for the first crude launch, uh, which we believe, will be ready by the end of February. Um, however, there's still a lot of work once the hardware is ready to uh, just cross check everything, quad triple check, quadruple check, uh, go over everything, everything again. Um, until this, every, every stone has been turned over three or four times, um, and, um, and and there's also the, the the schedule for getting to space station. So uh, because a space station has a lot of lot of things going to it, so what's the right timing for this? Um, and the 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 sort of collective wisdom at this point is that uh, um, we will. We, we, we think the we're, we're, we're highly confident the, the, hard, the hardware will be ready in Q1, most likely in February, but no later than March. And that uh, we think it, it appears probable that uh, the, the first crude launch would occur in the second quarter. Oh, I, I, think, um, I think that's a, a very fair assessment. Um, I would also say we have to make some decisions on our end from a NASA perspective. Do we want that first crew to be longer duration or do we want them to be a, a quick turnaround? Um, and those are those are decisions that we're going to be making in the coming weeks. Hi, uh, Chris Davenport from the Washington Post. Uh, I guess for Elon and Jim, um, and I wonder if you chose this as the second question in your betting pool, if you could talk about how profound it would be and what it would mean to restore human spaceflight from U.S. soil. It seems like we're at a real turning point, and it's just that closer, what that would mean from both SpaceX perspective and from NASA's. Thank you. I'll let you go, Elon. Oh, okay, I was going to let you. <laughs> um, well, the, I think it's really uh, quite profound. Um, I think the United States is very much a nation of explorers, a distillation of the human spirit of exploration, and it's obviously something that appears appeals to to people with an um, who, who are, have an adventurous. Um, you know, anyone who has an adventurous bone in their body uh, is is, is going to be very excited about this, um, and I think it uh, will help reinvigorate uh, interest in space. Um, it's remarkable to think that the last time that uh, a a crewed uh, uh, launch vehicle departed from the United States was, I believe, 2011 or thereabouts. So it's been almost a decade, which is remarkable, um, and so I think it'll be really quite, really, really profound to. Uh, have that uh, you know, it's kind of for for, for to, be, to be back in the saddle again and to be launching frequently with uh, uh, with the national crew. Um, I think it's uh, something that that matters to um, uh, all Americans and to to people worldwide. And I, I would um, I would say certainly we are a hundred percent. We are a nation of explorers. We're also a nation of that leads, and um, this of course represents us returning. American astronauts um, to space on American rockets from American soil. So this is a great opportunity for us to once again lead. And this time when we lead, we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. Uh, NASA is going to be a customer. We're going to be one customer of many customers, and we want Elon to have lots of customers. NASA Administrator Jim Bredenstein, along with Elon Musk. And stand by for my special announcement. All Fifty years ago, we pioneered a path to the moon. The trail we blazed cut through the fictions of science and showed us all what was possible. It's very pretty out here. We're going. We are going. We are going. We're going. Are you going? To join us to be among the first to witness American astronauts, to be launched from American soil on American rockets from the Kennedy Space Center. We are taking reservations. And yes, we are taking reservations beginning Tuesday, March 3rd. I would hope that each of you could join us when we watch the first launch of SpaceX Dragon. See us on Facebook, aboutspace.today, for more details. And thank you for joining me today, and be sure to share our program with your family and friends. Join me next week.
for the history announcement. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.